It's my 15th birthday today, everyone. Woohoo! Happy birthday to me. So, what do I want for my birthday? Not a new iPhone or makeup palette. All I want for my birthday is to kill Earth Day. Yes, I know, I said kill Earth Day. You're probably thinking, why in the heck would a young environmental activist fighting for her future want to kill Earth Day of all things? Let me explain. Earth Day originated on April 22nd, 1970. It came about to raise awareness and spur policy change to stop the issues such as raw sewage dumps, oil spills, polluting factories, pesticide use, deforestation, and the extinction of wildlife. Wow, so great, things must be better, right? 50 years later? Well, in my 15 years on being on this planet, I have seen my friends in the Marshall Islands lose their homes to storms and sea level rise. My friends in the Northern California agricultural community in the same wealthy county as Silicon Valley live without clean drinking water due to nitrate poisoning largely coming from the overuse of chemical fertilizer. I have seen mounds of trash including insurmountable amounts of single-use plastics in endangered sea turtle nesting grounds, in uninhabited islands in Palau, and in the environment of my friends in Lagos, Nigeria. Single-use plastics largely coming from bigger nations, such as China and the US. Yes, China and the US are two of the biggest contributors to plastic pollution. I live in fear that the California wildfires worsening every August through October will take my house one season. I have watched from my home in California the Great Barrier Reef bleach nearly fully due to mainly rising sea temperatures. And have read the reports saying that by 2050, the Great Barrier Reef might not exist anymore. That would mean a loss of 56 billion dollars in economic, social, and icon asset value. With 6.4 billion dollars in national economic contribution and 64,000 jobs supported by the reef, losing it would be devastating. Outside of the economic importance, the Great Barrier Reef is a huge marine ecosystem that supports tons and tons of life and it acts as a barrier, as the name suggests, to protect the coast of Australia from storms and waves. I worry that the next big oil spill could wipe out keystone species along our coast. I am painfully aware of the amount of our blue waters that are filled with dead zones. Areas of our ocean that life can no longer survive in because the oxygen has been sucked from it. I spent the last several months in my home because of a virus that turned into a global pandemic due to the exploitation of wildlife. Deadly pathogens have been entered into our daily lives, but we've had 50 Earth Days. So why aren't things changing for the better? Why have I seen all of these devastating occurrences at only 15 years old? Earth Day served its purpose in 1970. It got the attention of lawmakers as to environmental catastrophes, and some policies such as the Clean Water Act came out of it. But fast forward to today, 2020, 50 years later, and we're not better off. Earth Day has become a day, not a way. The momentum that was started in 1970 has slowed down to a near halt with the vast majority of people now only posting a picture of the sunset, writing love mother nature. And now corporations, including some of the worst polluting corporations, have jumped on board celebrating Earth Day in their greenwashed form, 
while carrying out business as usual 364 days out of the year, outside of their claim to care for Mother Earth. Let's look at the climate crisis, which is one of the biggest issues my generation will have to face and is linked to almost every human impact on our planet. In 1972, just two years after the first Earth Day, a baseline temperature was set from which humanity can measure our planet's warming and then determine a limit for a temperature that can sustain life as we know it. From 1972, the Earth should not increase by more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. The Paris Accord Agreement was entered into just five years ago because member states of the United Nations recognized that we would be exceeding this limit of one, an increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius if countries continued to emit greenhouse gases at the rate that they were. Scientists from around the world in Climate Analytics and NASA have determined that at the rate in which we are emitting greenhouse gases, by the year 2100, when I am 95 years old, our planet will be at an increase of 3.5 degrees Celsius. And every country in the Paris Accord Agreement has missed their mark or is emitting even more greenhouse gases or is in deepening their investment in fossil fuels. So right now, we are on a trajectory for the worse. Sounds pretty bleak for us kids, huh? So what do we do? Well, we get unstoppable because we have to. And that is what it's like to be a kid born in this time period full of these issues that we are going to be inheriting. Well, I'm mad. And I'm one of the luckier kids, relatively speaking. It's my 15th birthday today, and I'm not spending it going out with my friends or going to the beach. I'm spending it wishing that the adults of today's business, government, and education system would take real, effective, long-term action for the health of this planet and that I will be inheriting. I'm spending it wondering if I should have kids or not, because based on what science shows, by the year 2100, in 80 years, our planet might not be habitable for humans. But I'm also spending my birthday speaking to you all with hope and lots of it. Why? Because I believe that you care. I believe that you will share my story and the story of thousands of other kids out there. I believe that you will kill what Earth Day has become and commit to a new Earth Day. A rebirth of Earth Day. A rebirthday. So what do I wish for as I blow out my 15 candles today? I wish that you will support policy that will make the world a better place for my generation and generations to come. And that you'll vote for leaders who understand the importance of science who will commit to reforming our primary and secondary education system, allowing all youth to learn about the problems they will be inheriting and help them develop skills to solve them. And leaders who will commit to protecting our food, water, and air from being further poisoned. I wish that everyone would commit to changing their lifestyles away from unnecessary fossil fuel dependence and from supporting the petrochemical industry by avoiding single-use plastics when possible and away from non-essential harmful activities such as frequenting golf courses. We are doing some of these things now during this time of COVID-19 and sheltering in place. Although this pandemic has had horrific impacts on humanity, we've also seen positive impacts on the environment. Baby sea turtles are hatching and making their way safely to the water without being harassed by pets or humans on the northeast coast of Brazil. Wild boar have descended into the streets of Barcelona 
and mountain goats have overtaken a town in Wales. It seems as though Mother Nature is taking back what is rightfully hers. People in Nepal and northern India can finally see Mount Everest 200 kilometers away because the air pollution in those areas has cleared up. And for the first time ever in history, on April 21st, 2020, oil prices went negative. Demand for oil had collapsed so much that on April 20th, the benchmark price for a barrel of oil to be delivered the next month dropped to negative $37.63. That means that a supplier would have to pay someone that much for them to take the oil off of their hands. This was the first time anything like this had ever happened. Since humans have been locked up, we've seen oil prices drop. Animals return to their land and air pollution clear up. What does that say about humanity? What does that say about the impact we have on the world? We can no longer afford to keep up this consumerist mindset that many countries have adopted. We have seen a significant change for the better once humans were forced to stay inside. Of course, we can't live in our basements for the rest of our lives, but we can learn from what we have seen to create less of an impact once we return to the wild. I know growing pains hurt. I felt them quite recently. I used to be barely five feet and now I'm five six. I have my dad's genes. Let's get a bit uncomfortable and imagine a new Earth Day, a rebirth day, and take the difficult but necessary action to save this planet, our home, for you, for your kids, for their kids, and for generations to come. And thank you for making my birthday wishes come true. Music